If there's one flat earth name that I hear time and time and time again from the flurfers, it's Witsit Gets It. They have truly placed him on some sort of pedestal as being an all-knowing, undefeatable flat earther. Well, I've looked at Witsit before, but I think it's past time that we look at him again. Welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Now, Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. Now, on top of that, they also block ads, trackers, malwares and phishing attempts and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you want simultaneously. The internet today in this day and age knows a hell of a lot about us. So that's why we should care about our online data. And you can use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and then send it via a secure VPN tunnel so that no one can see it without your permission, which is really good for protecting things like your ID. Now ID theft happens all the time and it's actually quite scary. So you can use Surfshark's hack lock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Now Hacklock will scan various databases of leaked information and then it will notify its users if their data is found so that they can take action. So click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use that promo code simandan to get that whopping 83% off plus your three months extra free. Right, back to today's video and Witsit gets it. Now he is of the belief that Earth does not move at all. And in his series, True Earth 101, he's gonna talk about this motion. Now, a quick caveat here. Witsit is very, very good at retaining information and he speaks well. The trouble is, he twists and turns the truth to suit his narrative. Using complex words while sounding confident, yet in reality, he knows nothing more than a primary school child. Take it away, Witsit. I can construct for you a spherically symmetrical universe with Earth at its center, and you cannot disprove it based on observations. You can only exclude it on philosophical grounds. In my view, there's absolutely nothing wrong in that. What I want to bring into the open is the fact that we are using philosophical criteria and choosing our models. A lot of cosmology tries to hide that. You don't say, George. I mean... It didn't get any better since you've made this quote. They completely try to hide it. They call it science and they deny that it's it's basically philosophy. What he's saying here is that you can treat the earth as stationary and in the center of the entire universe and you can't disprove it with any observations. You can only say, I don't like it philosophically. He says, I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, I disagree, but at least he tried to point it out to people because he said people try to hide that fact and claim it's science. You know what else George Ellis said? when talking about the independent movie, The Principle, which is a film about Earth being of a geocentric nature, he said, and I quote, I was interviewed for it, but they did not disclose this agenda, which of course is nonsense. Nonsense wits it. Did you hear that? Claim number one is that the Earth is in motion. The Earth is supposedly spinning over a thousand miles per hour at the equator while revolving around the sun 66,600 miles per hour on an actual tilt of 66.6 .6 degrees. That's a positive claim. We need to kind of test that. And let me just break down some basic logic here. Do you ever experience that the Earth is moving? Of course not. We can stack rocks up. We actually notice when the Earth moves, it's called an earthquake, right? Because it's actually moving from its previous stationary position. We can see smokestacks going up just straight up in the air. From our observation, the Earth's not moving. How many times do we have to say this? Human senses are pretty rubbish. There are times when you can absolutely not trust them. But time and time and time again, the flat earthers always say, but can you feel the Earth move? Of course we can't, because we're in constant motion, which according to physics means we may as well be stationary. Now, the globe claims it is, you just can't tell. Okay, maybe so. But you have to verify that, you know, you have to give us some type of evidence to truly substantiate that because the default position based on all empirical evidence, whether that be how we shoot missiles, how we fly planes, how we fly helicopters, how we do anything, we assume that the Earth is stationary and how we even look at anything in quote unquote space is we assume the Earth's in the center and stationary. And this is because everything else on Earth, including the atmosphere, is moving too. As I said earlier, constant uniform motion means we do not feel it. And it is the same as saying that we're not moving. Therefore, to save a load of mathematical problems, it's just easier to assume 
that the Earth is not moving. By the way, Witsit, you believe when NASA says in a few pages that we can assume Earth is not rotating for the sake of mathematical modelling of flight simulation, but you don't believe in anything else NASA says. You see how that seems a bit off, Witsit? So if you're going to claim that's actually just an illusion, you have to, of course, substantiate that. So let's see if this claim of motion of this globe Earth model was actually verified, right? I mean, that's basic logic. We need to verify if this claim is true, because it seems like a lot of people don't really know what it is that they believe in, and they've never actually assessed it with intellectual honesty and logic. This is where they say that we live. And just a quick reminder, they say it's spinning over a thousand miles per hour east of the equator. That's linear speed. You measure a rotating object with angular velocity. And that is twice as slow as the hour hand on a clock in the case of Earth. Right, and of course it's going at different speeds based on different uh, latitudes because it's a sphere. But the exact same angular velocity at different latitudes. They claim it's tilted, wobbling, three different wobbles at least, on a 66.6 .6 degree axis. No, not 66.6 .6 degrees, 23.44 degrees. Why say 66.6 .6 when it is patently incorrect? And that's, of course, because 23.4 taken from 90 is 66.6. .6. Then say that it's 23.4 and not 66.6. .6. And you want to talk about intellectual honesty. And it's supposedly orbiting around the sun, 66,600 miles per hour. The average velocity of Earth in its orbit is around 107,000 kilometers per hour. The orbital velocity of Earth gets faster and slower as it orbits the sun because of its elliptical orbit and then flying through the galaxy over 1 million miles per hour. And really, it's, that's a typo, it's, it's flying with the sun through the galaxy 500,000 miles per hour as the galaxy flies through space over a million miles per hour. And that's actually a bit of a disingenuous animation, that one, because the solar system travels through space at an angle of around 60 degrees to that of the Milky Way, and systematically moving across the galactic plane as it travels around the center of the galaxy. Here's a quote, no physical experiment ever proved that the Earth actually is in motion. Lincoln Barnett, the universe and Dr. Einstein. Hmm, that seems a little different than what we've been told or led to believe, huh? We just covered the basic logic that everything we've ever experienced is that it's not moving, so we're going to need some evidence that it is moving. These quotes are silly because you don't ever check them out. Why is there a capital N for no? Because there shouldn't be. That was not the start of the sentence. Now, this quote was lifted from a paragraph where Barnett was talking about Einstein's thought process regarding the motion of bodies through space. The very next paragraph after that says, and I'm reading all of it for context. Shortly after publishing the special theory of relativity, however, Einstein began wondering if there is not indeed one kind of motion which may be considered absolute in that it can be detected by the physical effect it exerts on the moving system itself without reference to any other system. For example, an observer in a smoothly running train is unable to tell by experiments performed inside the train whether he is in motion or at rest. But, if the engineer of the train suddenly applies the brakes or jerks open the throttle, he will then be made aware by the resulting jolt of a change in his velocity. And if the train rounds a turn, he will know by the outward tug of his own body resisting a change of direction that the train's course has been altered in a certain way. Therefore, Einstein reasoned, if only one object existed in the entire universe, the Earth for example, and it suddenly began to gyrate irregularly, its inhabitants would be uncomfortably aware of their motion. This suggests that non-uniform motion, such as that produced by forces and accelerations, may be absolute after all. It also suggests that empty space can serve as a system of reference within which it is possible to distinguish absolute motion. Quote mining again, Witsit. Dear, oh dear. But let me guess, Barnett was wrong in his second paragraph. To the question whether or not the motion of the Earth in space can be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments, meaning as to the question of we, whether or not we can actually detect or perceive the alleged motion of the Earth in an experiment on the Earth, we've already remarked that every attempt of this nature led to a negative result meaning we weren't able to actually ever detect, perceive, or measure the motion of the Earth that is assumed. Before the theory of relativity was put forward, it was difficult to become reconciled to this negative result. That's Albert Einstein, Relativity to Special and General Theory, 1920, page 61. The key here is before the theory of relativity. Before it was put forward, it was difficult to reconcile this negative result. You literally just read it out. 
He then explains that the struggle so violent way back in the day uh, between Ptolemy and Copernicus would really be meaningless because either coordinate system could be used with equal justification. I, of course, challenge him on that. You have to verify the validity or justification for the idea that it's moving. We know that the stationary Earth can be used with justification because that's how we use the Earth for everything. This is a hostile witness, and he says the two sentences, quote, the sun is at rest and the Earth moves, or the sun moves and the Earth is at rest, would simply mean two different conventions concerning two different coordinate systems, Albert Einstein and the evolution of physics, 1938. Of course, relativity is still used to this day as the glue for this entire claim that we're flying through space and just can't tell. But that's what general relativity is. It's the nature of the beast. You pick a coordinate system and describe what you're seeing. It can actually be used to disprove any theory you put forward regarding Earth. So he says, while I was thinking about this problem in my student years, I came to the result of Michelson Morley experiment. Soon I came to the conclusion that our idea about the motion of the Earth with respect to the ether is incorrect. If we admit Michelson's null result as a fact, this was the first path which led me to the special theory of relativity. Since then, I've come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, though the Earth is revolving around the sun in the context of Michelson Morley and using the word optics, that would be utilizing light, which is the most precise form of measurement that we have to this day, you can use laser interferometry to very precisely measure motion. What, you're just going to gloss over the fact that Einstein said at the end there, though the Earth is revolving around the Sun? The michelson morley experiment was trying to detect the proposed ether, and it failed, meaning there is no ether. And by their own words, with no ether, the Earth must be in motion. Look, Witsit can sit here and quote mine to his heart's content, but it does not disprove anything regarding Earth's motion. For example, Barnard's star is the star with the largest proper motion of any star that we can see. Now, proper motion is the angular change in position of a star across our line of sight, measured in arc seconds per year. Now, that takes into account a star's radial velocity and true motion, and it measures against the backdrop of stars. Now, Barnard's star has a proper motion of around 10 arc seconds per year. Now, the great thing about this is when we measure the parallax of Barnard's star, we see it moving from left to right, a consequence of Earth's orbit around the sun viewing the star from different viewing points throughout the year. Boom. Wow, what a finish that was. What do you all think of that? And what did you think of Witsit's quote mining? Let me know in the comments either way. But for now, I have to say we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. We'll leave Witsit there and perhaps we'll revisit another one of his True Earth 101 videos soon. Thanks so much for watching today. It is, of course, truly appreciated. Uh, and if you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that thumbs up button too. And if you really enjoyed it, consider sharing it as well. Just now time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today. Uh, remember, click the link in the description or visit surfshark.deal slash simandan and use the code simandan to get that huge 83% off and the three months extra free. I've been Simandan, have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday where we're gonna be looking at aliens. See you then.